in the last episode, you got to see what the Grenadier will eventually look like. Well, now's your chance to hear it and to see it undergoing some of its preliminary testing. Yes, I'm back in Austria to catch up with the engineers responsible for developing and testing the Grenadier's powertrain. And that is actually a lot steeper than it looks. Early prototype Grenadiers, called 2As, are being used to specially tune and calibrate petrol and diesel variants of the same BMW 3-litre six-cylinder engine. The engine tuning and calibration project is being led by engineer George Fuchs. Give me a bit of a rev, just rev the engine for me, just a little bit. That's cool. It sounds really smooth though. Yeah, it's a diesel one. So the two engine options are going to be what, just to clarify? So here you can see the diesel version and before on the desk truck you have seen the petrol version. Both are three litre versions uh, with uh, six straight cylinders. Why take an existing engine that's being used for a different purpose off the shelf and modify it rather than just go let's build a brand new engine from scratch. We know we can count on the BMW one. We fulfill all emission standards on every market. We know we can adapt this engine for the use of the Grenadier project. The most important thing is to have a high amount of torque at, at low engine revs. We need a robust engine and we need an engine we can count on because we need to be flexible and have a high amount of torque and power. Be able to bring up the vehicle also with a trailer, for example, up the hill. How hard is it retuning, recalibrating either a diesel or petrol version of this to make it the right engine for Grenadier? We need two to three years of calibration activities. So we have several loops, winter testing, several loops in hot climate testing, emission testing and so on. So in terms of calibration then, and what you can change, what are you actually fiddling with and, and changing when you're calibrating? It's a mix of, of old components which are relevant for the engine, the air index system, then you have uh, cooling temperature, you have fuel supply, you have the exhaust system. Here you can see in front, th these are approximately 12 pressure sensors which are measuring the pressure in the fuel supply, in the cooling system and so on. Where's the data capturing equipment? In the back of the wheel. All right, okay. <laughs> Now it's looking complicated. So what are all these boxes? So on the left side, in, the, in, in green color, you can see all the temperature measurement points. And then to the right, the flow rate sensors and the pressure sensors. And so then all that lot then just hooks up to one laptop. Then we check it after uh, every test. So you guys have already done extensive testing, 18 months or so. How much more have you got to do? So approximately one year is left and uh, in total we will travel 1.8 1, 1. Uh, million kilometers. That's a lot of testing. Yeah. Ineos Automotive is working with off-road engineering giant Magna to develop not only the Grenadier's engines, but also its heavy-duty transmission. The company's impressive facilities here in Graz are world-renowned. The Grenadier's transmission program is being led by INEOS automotive engineer, Job Swallow. I'm keen to find out firsthand how things are going, and there's a burning question that needs a straight answer. Will there be a manual option? No. And why not? We've reviewed all the options and we believe that the auto is the best option. It offers the full suite of, of functionality for the experienced drivers, but also for the inexperienced drivers. These are both a ZF8 HP, uh, eight-speed automatic transmission with torque converter, fully electronic control, best in class, definitely. And in terms of the features in it that make it better for off-road use, for the kind of customers who are going to end up driving these vehicles? Oh, definitely. It has a torque converter which prevents stall, increases torque. Um, there's a manual mode for, for the enthusiasts to, to select their gear and keep that gear or keep it in drive for the inexperienced drivers. So the transfer case, this has been a big part of the powertrain development for Grenadier, hasn't it? Yes, it's massive. We've developed a, a transfer case from a blank sheet of paper. Why was that so important for this project? This is the part that makes this car a 4x4. If you don't have the transfer case right, then your off-road performance will be not as good as it should be. 
we are targeting to be best in class. So the transfer case needs to be that too. So what essentially is unique about the transfer case? The fact that it's permanent 4x4. There's not many manufacturers doing that. Most of them choose to go for a permanent rear-wheel drive and then have the user select the 4x4. Um, we've deliberately decided not to do so. We want to offer our customers this experience and understand also you're driving on the road, you decide to make a detour through the country or whatever, the countryside. There's no complex switches and, and buttons to be, uh, to be used or, or you need to stop to put it in 4x4. You just take the corner and you've got drive on all the four wheels. In terms of operation though, this is, this is a manual selection, yes. high and low range. Correct, so it's manually high and low range and manually diff lock. Um, that was a deliberate decision again. The manual shifting system is just it's, it's rugged, it's durable, and it's also very good, well serviceable in the field. So huge amount to think about. I mean, lots of fantastic information there, but where are you with the current development? We're building 100 plus full vehicle prototypes. So we've moved from component testing into system testing, and now we're gonna do the full vehicle testing. So for the next coming year and more, there's going to be a whole bunch of cars running around the whole world. That means cars doing calibration on, on every aspect of the car. Transmission, engine, brakes, ESP, ABS, everything. Durability runs, hot climate, cold climate. We're going to see America, we're going to see Africa, we're going to see New Zealand this year. We're going to see Australia, everywhere. How does that feel for the engineering team at, at INEOS? It's Christmas. <laughs> It is, it is, because you've been working on, on virtual components on a computer screen for every engineer. That's a magic moment. But also a new phase in the program, because that, now you're going to put these components to their face. It's going to be an exciting period. So there you have it. A high-torque three-liter engine, a class-leading transfer case, and 1.8 million kilometers of testing. That's it for now, see you next time.